The soul that comes unto Christ, who knows his voice and strives to do as he did, finds a strength, as our hymn says, beyond our own. He is saying to us, trust me, learn of me, do what I do. Then, when you walk where I am going, he says, we can talk about where you're going and the problems you face and the troubles you have. If you will follow me, I will lead you out of darkness, he promises. I will give you answers to your prayers. I will give you rest to your souls. How does one come unto Christ in response to this constant invitation? The easiest and the earliest come simply with the desire of our heart, the most basic form of faith that we know. If ye can no more than desire to believe, Alma says, exercising just a particle of faith, giving even a small place for the promises of God to find a home, that is enough to begin. Second, we must change anything we can change that may be part of the problem. In short, we must repent. Perhaps the most hopeful and encouraging word in the Christian vocabulary. We thank our Father in heaven, we are allowed to change. We thank Jesus, we can change. And ultimately, we do so only with their divine assistance. Third, in as many ways as possible, we try to take upon us his identity. And we begin by taking upon us his name. These start with baptism and conclude with temple covenants. With many others, such as partaking of the sacrament, laced throughout our lives as additional blessings and reminders. Above all else, loving, loving with the pure love of Christ. That gift, please note, that never faileth. That gift that beareth all things, believeth all things, hopeth all things, and endureth all things.